I want to thank you guys for joining me and I'm excited to talk about this topic tonight. Uh, today I'll be discussing PPIs, what are their side effects. I'm sure you've heard in the news about some of the side effects with these acid reducing medications including things like Nexium or Prilosec. And tonight I want to discuss exactly what are the side effects that are out there, what are the things you need to worry about, and what is hype and what is legitimate. So I want to encourage you to continue to listen while I go through these particular topics to find out exactly what is the truth behind the side effects of PPI therapy. And so PPIs, are they safe? I'm sure you've seen in the news about some of the side effects with these medications, you know, the risk for causing stroke, Alzheimer's, kidney disease and whatnot. And I will be honest with you, there are gonna be more and more studies coming out uh, bringing about some of the concerns with these acid reducing medication. And there's gonna be a lot of these studies which may be true, some which may be not true, and it's going to bring a lot of confusion to what are the true side effects of these acid-reducing medications. And some of the things you may have seen about, as seen about with respect to these medications, there is a risk of absorption of certain vitamins, including magnesium, B12, folate, vitamin D, risk of osteoporosis, hip fracture, kidney disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, stomach infections, pneumonia, a really bad diarrhea infection called C. difficile diarrhea, dementia, overall death, cardiovascular events, plavix, stomach cancer, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are gonna be more and more studies that are coming out which may propose a side effect or a concern with being on these medications long-term. And the question is, are these legitimate concerns? You know, Should you as a patient who's on this medication worry about that? And should we as clinicians worry about this as well? Well, when you look at the data, when you combine all of the data for these research studies for patients who are on these acid-reducing medications, you actually look at the studies and do analysis of these studies to find out which is true and what is not true. When it comes down to the basics, there are only three main side effects with these acid-reducing medications overall. There is a possible risk of acute kidney injury or causing some injury to your kidneys. There is a risk of developing enteric infection, specifically small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And there may be some structural and functional changes in the gastric mucosa. That's it, and that's all we have to worry about for things with respect to side effects with these acid-reducing medications. So other things that people have talked about, osteoporosis, dementia, Alzheimer's, absorption of certain vitamins, these have not shown to be true legitimate risk factors when it comes to long-term PPI use. And I wanna stress this, it, you, you should not have to worry about some of the other side effects. We look at the clinical data for all of these side effects, these are the only three you have to worry about, the ones that are highlighted on this slide, and that's basically it. And so if we look at the studies that have been coming out with these side effects with these acid-reducing medication, there are more and more studies coming, as this slide shows. And the reason is because this gets a lot of press. You hear about these news stories about the side effects with the acid-reducing medication. A lot of people get on the news with this. A lot of people get their studies published with this. And so there are going to be more and more papers coming out. But once again, when you look at the absolute risk, this is the risk of developing any of these side effects, at most, they're less than 1%, and that's at most. So 99% of our patients who are on these medications long-term have no side effects that you have to worry about except for the three that I mentioned before, and even those side effects are very minimal, if any. And so what are you to do as a patient when you're on these acid-reducing medications? The number one thing I would make, recommend is make sure you have a clear indication of why you're taking it. If you're on this medication, ask your doctor why. Why am I on this medication? How long do I have to take it? Is there a reason why I actually have to continue, continue this or not? You'd be surprised there are more and more patients who get placed on these medications who don't know why. They don't have heartburn, they don't have reflux, they never had an ulcer, they just happen to be placed on it and they continue it for a year. So make sure you have a clear indication why you're on it speak to your healthcare provider about that. Number two is that if you are on it, see if you can be on the lowest possible dose to control your symptoms. If you're on 40, 40 milligrams of Nexium, speak to your healthcare provider about, putting on, about being placed on 20 milligrams of Nexium. So try and see if you can take the lowest dose possible. For some people, they, name, they may need intermittent dosing. And for some people, this is the right thing to do. I have some patients who I put on these acid-reducing medication. They take it once every two or three days or take it as needed. Make sure you speak to your health care provider about whether you can be on intermittent dosing or not. 
For some people, they can just be on an acid or an H2 antagonist like Tagamet or Zegrit, and that's perfectly fine. I have plenty of patients who have acid reflux or have minimal heartburn. We have them take occasional Tums or Zantac, and it controls your symptoms adequately. But make sure you speak to your healthcare provider before you switch to a different type of medication because there may be a reason why you actually are taking these acid-reducing medications. Now, the biggest thing that you can do is lifestyle. And I tell all my patients this, GERD and reflux is a lifestyle disease. The more you enjoy your lifestyle, the more you're going to have the disease. And the biggest thing that you can do to help out with that is weight loss. By far, weight loss is the most effective thing that you can do to help out with your acid reflux and your heartburn. Even losing a little bit of weight will make tremendous improvement in your heartburn symptoms and make you feel a lot better as well. And also, avoiding some of the trigger foods that can cause heartburn to occur. These include things like tomato-based substances, coffee, chocolate, spicy foods, and processed foods. Now, for some people, they may not notice any difference by stopping, stopping these particular foods, and that's perfectly fine. You know that for your particular body, that is not a trigger. But there are some people who know that as soon as I have coffee, I have acid reflux. So try to minimize that if you can, and use your body as a guide for what are your particular trigger foods. So in summary, keep in mind that the side effects overall are very minimal. And so I don't want you to be, I don't want you to be scared or worried about taking these medications long term, especially if you have a real clear indication of why you need to be on that. Make sure you take your medications for the right reason. Speak to your healthcare provider. Ask, do I need to be on this medication? If you do, ask if you can be on either the lowest dose possible, or maybe try even intermittent dosing as well. But most importantly, speak to your healthcare provider about any changes that you may make. I would not encourage you to do these changes on your own. I would encourage you to have a discussion with your healthcare provider to see whether you can make these changes or not, and whether it's worth to make a change in the dose that you're on, or even changing it to a different type of medication. If you guys have any more questions about your heartburn or reflux or anything else within the GI system, I would encourage you to contact our office. We're here to help you in any way that we can. But thank you for listening and have a good night.